development of an off-speed drop ball pitch that makes her go. Garcia with some clutch hits in the Super Regionals against James Madison. Has been as good as they get in the circle. There is their head coach, highly decorated, Kelly Inouye Perez, getting a co-champion title with the Washington Huskies this year. They did sweep Washington. Second in the country in both batting average and ERA, only Oklahoma, the number one overall seed, better in those categories. Only 10 runs allowed in the entire NCAA tournament. Five of them came in their lone postseason loss in game six of the Westwood Regional against Missouri. Meanwhile, a 5-0 start to the postseason for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. The first Big Ten team to reach the World Series since Michigan in 2016. And if you've ever been in Minneapolis for any type of Minnesota sporting event, you know that they're all in. If you've ever been to the World Series to watch UCLA, you know their fans are all in. <laughs> How about the juxtaposition? 11 titles versus a first-timer at the World Series. Let's do it. McKenna Partain leads it off for the Gophers. Partain, a near 400 hitter this season, sets the table a near 500 on base percentage. Over 170 career starts to get to this point for Partain. Nothing in two from Garcia. Hits it to second over is Washington to make the play. against Garcia. Garcia has pitched 80% of the postseason innings for UCLA's staff. Houlihan takes a strike. And with the addition of the freshman Megan Fremo and then the development of Holly Acevedo, really strong staff that's completed one of the best team ERAs. It's not just relied on Rachel Garcia this year, maybe just in the postseason, but it's been a team effort this year for them. One of the keys for this season was to not overthrow Rachel Garcia, who came out like gangbusters in the first two games last year at the World Series with 30 combined strikeouts. And maybe ran out of a little bit of gas once they got to Sunday and she was trying to pitch twice. Kelly Inouye Perez says, I want a staff. Take some pressure off Garcia. And she's gotten a heck of a response so far. And Garcia fans her first batter of the day. And goes with their backdoor curve here to Maddie Houlihan. So nothing but strikes to start this game, Rachel Garcia has. Six pitches, two up and two down, and here is the aforementioned Hope Brandner of 19 home runs this year. Taking a strike. One shy of the Minnesota record set by now Florida Gator, Kendall Lindemann. Lindemann was an All-American at Minnesota, ended up transferring around November. And Brander has taken the mantle as the top power hitter in this Minnesota order. A more powerful lineup this year than last. And has experience against Rachel Garcia yep. coming over from Oregon State. Faced her before. Said, I remember Garcia. 
That's about all she gave us. Understandable. We've seen these pitches before that have movement at 70. Two and two. Both of these players are about as important to their teams as anybody. Neither of them flashy. These are very focused, locked in players. Had a chance to talk to them yesterday and just remember how focused both of these players and so many are. I'm convinced some of these some of these women are cold blooded. <laughs> Well, I loved uh, Hope Brander's response when we asked her about Rachel Garcia. And she's like, yeah, Rachel Garcia is awesome, but we have Amber Pfizer. And she said it emphatically. Yep. The first team All-American pitcher who's getting the start here today from Minnesota. Payoff pitch to Brandner. And a two-out walk. Love that at bat by Brandner to see some pitches really work the count, especially after two quick outs by Partain and Houlihan. Took some close pitches, made Garcia work. Found a way on. And she sets it up for one of the impact freshmen in college softball in Natalie Denhartog. Seventeen home runs this year in her first season of college softball. Minnesota through and through. Her dad coaches football at the high school she went to. Yeah, Hopkins in Minnesota. And this is why that Hope Brander at bat was so important, to work the count, take some pitches, and really put pressure on Garcia, because now look at Den Hartog finding herself in a hitter's count 2-0. Not oftentimes against a pitcher like Garcia who goes right at you that you're going to get yourself into a hitter's count, but if you can take advantage of it early in this game, more power to you. Big hack. Two balls and a strike. We've seen some cuts early on Garcia. Not afraid to swing away at the player of the year. Two and two. Stairs and got her to chase. A pair of strikeouts for Garcia, and we'll see UCLA's offense in the bottom of the first against Amber Pfizer. The Pfizer. NCAA Women's College World Series is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. Run with us. And Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Generated a scout, one of the top pitchers in the country. UCLA's bats will come up against Amber Pfizer in a scoreless bottom half of the first inning. UCLA can get pop in different parts of their order. Their Capital One starting lineup looks like this, with Bubba Nichols sitting right at the top, back in the leadoff spot where she feels comfortable. Yeah, and Coach Inouye Perez calls her one of the most consistent hitters to ever wear the uniform at UCLA. A lot of punch up at the top. They'll take on the All-American who has thrown every pitch of the NCAA tournament so far, Amber Pfizer. I mean, she's thrown so, almost close to 600 pitches, .78 ERA this tournament. 
She's been on fire, and she's been on a mission, so consistent with the energy that she brings from the first pitch on in the tournament. She'll face Bubba Nichols and deal ball one. Nichols a junior. Seven for 21 in the postseason so far. But most of that damage, in fact, just about all of it done in the regionals. Struck out five times in six at bats in the Supers against James Madison, but jokingly told her head coach, oh, I'm just saving the best. It's the corner, does Pfizer, two and one. And it's going to be important for Pfizer just to continue to find her breath, slow her heart rate down. Because every pitch that she's thrown this postseason has been in Minneapolis. They got to host regionals, they got to host supers, but here is a different ball game. In the air, down the line. Back at the wall, Brandt and Bubba Nichols gives UCLA the lead in the first. If she was saving it, she saved it for the right time <laughs> at the World Series. Inside pitch, it's even off the plate, but man, her hands were fast to get to that pitch. Clearly looking for that side, pulling her hands in close to her body to get her barreled to that hard in pitch. What a sound off the bat, one of my favorite sounds of this game. And you could tell because of that sound and because of how she got to contact, that one was headed out of here. So here's Brianna Perez. Kelly Enoy Perez said, I put Bubba Nichols back at the top of the lineup because she's a tone setter. Good way to set the tone for UCLA's offense, which is already out to a lead for Garcia. Strike to Perez. 17 home runs now for Bubba Nichols. Her third of the postseason. And now, she has the most RBIs in the NCAA tournament. Perez pops it up. Kemet Mueller, the third baseman in the excellent left side of the defense, makes the first out for Amber Pfizer. Amber Pfizer is a pitcher who just won't give in. She can throw hard, 70, 71 miles an hour with her curveball. Loves to spin that pitch away from right-handed hitters. It's her favorite pitch. It's her off-speed curveball that she'll drop down to 59 miles an hour with a ton of spin. And her ability to change speeds has been huge this postseason. Here's Aaliyah Jordan. Jordan getting the start in right field today as she has been doing most of the latter half of the season latter quarter of the year there's the home run ball goes right to the Bruin bubble <laughs> surprised they let so, it in <laughs> <laughs> you can't yeah it's, it's weird to penetrate the bubble but it, the is ball, hard. it was a home run ball it's hard to get in the bubble it's fans from other Pac-12 schools all uh Marking off their bingo cards. <laughs> the first Bruin bubble reference of the weekend. We're talking about Jordan playing back in the field in the latter quarter of the season. Dealt with Tommy John surgery in the offseason, so was not playing in the field for about three quarters of the year. Right, now back. Feeling healthy, ready to go after that surgery in the offseason. Just a pure hitter. So much power. Really established herself as a freshman last year. Just burst onto the scene with a bang. And then unfortunately had to go through that surgery where set her back a little bit. But still, you can see her numbers. 367, 10 home runs. And even her first swing back. After her rehab process, she was hitting front toss out on the field. First swing, hit a home run. I mean, that's just how natural and pure of a hitter that she is. It, it, she's the type of hitter where it just looks like hitting comes easy to her. 12 home runs as a freshman. Was a first-team All-American.
I think she thought that was ball four. <laughs> it was a 2-2 pitch that was outside. Now the count runs full as Cam Ellison reminds Jordan of the full count. Three, two. On the outside corner for called strike three. And to me, this just epitomizes the type of pitcher that Amber Pfizer has been this year. Gave up the leadoff home run, then goes right after Bree Perez to get a quick out, and then she strikes out Aaliyah Jordan on the screwball. Even a low rise on the outside corner. Gets her looking, and Jordan knew it right away. Tucks her bat, heads back to the dugout. Here is Rachel Garcia swinging away. Pfizer went with the changeup to start that at bat. Garcia, the excellent two-way player for UCLA. USA Softball National Player of the Year for a second straight season. And Pfizer gets ahead of her, nothing and two. It's a big out to get. Brandner taps the bag. And Garcia is retired. But Bubba Nichols gives UCLA the first inning lead. Moved her to the leadoff spot. Has the most power in the team. Leads the team and home runs. That pitch was off the plate. How did she get her barrel to it? She always has a plan. UCLA has a 1-0 lead on Minnesota. For more on the first-time World Series participants, Minnesota, here is Tiffany Green. Well, guys, Minnesota has really embraced being the new kids on the block. How about a 1-0 deficit in their first-ever Women's College World Series appearance? But how about Jamie Traxel, the second-year head coach, open fall practice and played the Aerosmith hit Dream On. She challenged her team to say, hey, dream big, why not us? They even put a poster up to remind them that, hey, this is our theme. We're gravitating, grabbing hold to it, and it's fueling us for this season. And they said, look, we are here. We're realizing and actualizing our dreams, but we're not just satisfied. We want to take it all. That's a great shot of the poster. Why not us? It became their mantra this year. Jamie Traxel has embraced that mentality. There is the second year head coach of the Golden Gophers. Came over after one year at Iowa State and a long tenure at North Dakota State. Caitlin Kemet Mueller leads things off for Minnesota in the second against Garcia. Well, and she's established this program as a place that you can stay home and chase your dreams. I mean, she said that exact quote that that's how she's establishing this, uh, this program at Minnesota. How about this? Teams to beat UCLA in their first World Series appearance. It has not happened very often. And in fact, it's never happened in the first game that a debut team plays. These are the only teams to beat UCLA in their first World Series appearance. No team has ever done it when they've had to face UCLA in their first game. One and two on Kevin Mueller. When you think away that they packed their schedule in the preseason, or excuse me, in the pre-conference schedule, had the number one strength of schedule in non-conference games, and that helped them earn that national, that that number seven national seed, and they felt like they were prepared to be here because of those games. Lost in the Big Ten Tournament Championship to Michigan. Finished third in the regular season in the Big Ten behind Michigan and Northwestern. And by the way, those three teams were separated by a game and a half. Two and two. down to first. No. 
Tracy Laycock is our umpire at first base for this one. Long at bat here from Kemet Mueller as Garcia tries to get the punch out. Emmett Mueller, one for 12 in the NCAA tournament. Goes down looking. Three strikeouts for Garcia, through four outs thus far. Going to that curveball. I love this view. It's exactly what the hitter sees, and what I see is just paint the outside corner with that curveball. Moves around that pitch, cuts it across. That'll bring up Allie Arneson. One of a number of outstanding shortstops that we have here at the Women's College World Series. Bree Perez for UCLA is a two-time Pac-12 all-defensive team selection. Arneson's all-Big Ten defensive team. We just saw Sis Bates and Jesse Harper for Washington and Arizona. And wait till you see some of the talent we have at shortstop in the night games tonight. Lyon and Reynoso, I mean, some outstanding defensive players playing the sixth spot at the World Series this year. Yeah, and Kylie Naomi for Oklahoma, for Oklahoma State, State, who's a freshman. Another thing to note about UCLA this year, Lisa Fernandez, their Hall of Fame assistant coach, getting back to calling pitches this year. Now, Rachel Garcia often calls her own game with the catcher Paige Halstead, but there is a very good communication flow between Fernandez, Halstead, and the three pitchers for UCLA. Look at the Four-time All-American. On to second, Washington makes the play. Lisa Fernandez with a .22 career ERA at UCLA. We'll never see that ever again, by the way, because of the era that we're in. <laughs> Only Tracy Compton had a better one. Hers was .15. So, wow. again, numbers that we will never see for players who pitch as many innings as a player like Fernandez did in her college career. Well, maybe if we move the, the mound up to about, <laughs> sure. I don't know, 29, 30 feet. Move the fence back 10 more feet down yeah. the line, sure. Yeah. Two down for Emma Burns. But you saw it more in the regular season, Garcia take control of that. In fact, she really enjoyed doing that because she was just able to learn a lot, able to right. think for herself, understand pitch calling, look at the hitters, and strategize a little bit. But now in the postseason, you're seeing Lisa Fernandez take it over a little bit. They still have a way to be able to communicate to each other. If Garcia is saying something like, yeah, I want to take over this at bat right here, then she'll give her the reins. Quickly, nothing and two on Burns. Freshman catcher, we mentioned Kendall Lindemann, who was so key for Minnesota the last couple of years behind the plate and hitting. Emma Burns did a great job of stepping in. Has really done a great job defensively, shutting down running attacks. Burns was a shortstop in high school, was not a major catcher coming to Minnesota. And when they needed to move her around because they, at the time, had a catcher in Kendall Lindemann, Emma Burns said her head was spinning because <laughs> she had to play everywhere in the field. And then when Lindemann left, Burns stepped in to another newer position. Bounces one to Washington, and the UCLA defense comes through again. Part of a 1-2-3, top of the second. Lisa Fernandez, the Hall of Famer, calling the pitches again for the Bruins.
Well, Amber Pfizer was greeted, grud uh, greeted rudely by Bubba Nichols with a solo home run in the bottom of the first, but retired the next three in order. Maybe used to the big stage after what we saw this past weekend. Minnesota clinches a spot in the World Series on Saturday. They invite the Gophers and Amber Pfizer to throw out the first pitch. Said she had to move a little bit in front of the mound. It was a little further than she was expecting. Obviously, it was a baseball, not a softball. She did not throw it underhand. Most importantly, did not bounce it. Very proud of that was Amber <laughs> Pfizer. And a chance to tie the great Sarah Moulton for the most wins in a season in Minnesota history today. And they wanted her to throw it underhand, but... Uh, yeah, it's like, a smaller no, ball, man. It's you can't, mess, you can't no. mess with that, no. Yeah. That she did great. I would be really nervous. I was nervous for a, the only first pitch I've ever thrown in my life. It was uh, <laughs> not great, man. <laughs> I know. Oh, boy. Taylor Pack, power hitter, leads it off and hits one to left for a base hit. Pack at a great super regional. And as a board to start off the bottom of the seventh for the Bruins. How many pitches do you think you've thrown? Like in my entire life? Like fifty thousand, maybe? Yeah. Probably yeah, yeah. maybe I don't know, somewhere between fifty and a hundred thousand. Has to be. Colleen Sullivan takes a strike. That might have been your worst pitch. But you have like 49,900 some odd really, really, really good ones. Better, better. There's the silver lining. That's absolutely. That's uh, If you really want to feel good about it, let's compare and contrast. Thanks for pumping me back yeah, up. Exactly. It. <laughs> Those 49,000 pitches are UCLA. The one bad pitch was Minnesota. It's, it's, it's just one mm -hmm. versus 11 titles versus a first time appearance. Yeah. There's a, a little bit of different weights to them. This is a really good conversation. I'm glad we had this together, <laughs> you and me, buddy. Is it a conversation when one person <laughs> talks the whole time? No. No, I mean, well, that's that's those are that's that's what our broadcasts are basically. <laughs> people who've never heard of us are like, this is the worst thing I've ever heard. In my <laughs> like, these people hate each other. What's wrong with them? Little floater into center, and Sullivan goes back to back with Pack. Two on, nobody out against Pfizer here in the second for UCLA. And yeah, they're doing a good job of hitting both sides of the plate. The Bubba Nichols home run was on the inside part of the plate. Taylor Pax hit in her, or in her corner, and then now Sullivan going with the pitch. Just seeing the ball well. I'd like to see Amber Pfizer. I know it's early, but already bring out that off-speed curveball. you got to keep these hitters off balance, maybe holding that pitch back, but let's let's bring it in now. Has to face a veteran in Tata Lafua. Pulling back to take a strike. Tauta Lafua seeking her first hit of the NCAA tournament. 0 for 13. There's Kurt Walker. And the assistance for UCLA. Tauta Lafua pops the bunt and it's nothing in two. I want to start keeping track and maybe we can do this is Missed bunt opportunities. We've seen a couple today. Already seen it. And at this point in the season, it should be one of the easiest things that you do. Square around early, see the ball in, let it hit your bag, get the top, and put it down. Now swing it away with two strikes. Takes outside. Tau to Lafua. Numbers down this year, but she has been... Big in her UCLA career, has hit a home run at the World Series already in her career. It's a great stop by Emma Burns yep. back there to get in front of that off-speed pitch. We talked about her. Her defense behind the plate has been key. She has caught 11 would-be base stealers and has only allowed 14. That's that off-speed curveball, Adam, that I, I was talking about and yep. calling for, but Amber Pfizer knuckles up on that pitch, and I think it's just fallen out of her hand. She's not able to get underneath it and spin it across. Both of those low and in pitches that Emma Burns has had to block has been out of her hand like that. 3-2. By the way. Got away with the mistake there. 
well over the middle of the plate. Who can take advantage of mistakes? Took Arizona a little while yeah. against Washington to maybe take advantage of a couple of misfires by Taryn Alvello. Finally did late in the game. 3-2 again. Oh, and skips in, and the bases are loaded with nobody out for UCLA here in the bottom of the second inning. And she tried to go to it again on that full count, but it fell out of her hand, and Piper Ritter, the pitching coach, is going to come out and talk to her because that's a pitch that she has to have. Threw it in the dirt three or four times within that at bat. This is a pitch that I'm talking about. You can tell it just slips out. Emma, Emma Burns working hard back on the plate. Yep. Piper Ritter, who's been around for a long time at Minnesota, a great pitcher herself, has been through the coaching change and has been through several changes. In fact, when Jamie Traxel got the job as the head coach of Minnesota, her first quote-unquote recruit yeah. <laughs> was Piper Ritter as her lead assistant and pitching coach. 12 years of Minnesota for Piper Ritter. Yeah, you talked about the shortstops. We have some really great pitching coaches <laughs> yeah. at the World Series, too. Especially in this game. Both of their alma maters, Fernandez at UCLA, Ritter at Minnesota. Here's Kinsley Washington. Base is loaded, nobody out. count 2 and 0. Oh. Nobody other than Pfizer has thrown a pitch in the postseason for Minnesota. They've got Sydney Smith who's got big game experience with LSU as the number two option but it's been all Pfizer in the postseason. And she's behind 3 and 0 oh with nowhere to put Washington. Remember Pfizer, too, you can trust your defense. Minnesota has one of the best defenses in yep. terms of fielding percentage in the country. Like Kinsley Washington, put into play and let your D work. Ball four, and the Bruins take a two to nothing lead. Couple of singles and a couple of walks. And now the nine hitter, Gooden's gonna come up. I wonder how short, if at all, the hook is gonna be. Gooden, one of the best hitters out of the nine hole in the country. And this is uncharacteristic for Amber Pfizer yeah. too. In 36 innings pitched in the NCAA tournament coming into this game, she'd only given up just eight walks. Two in this inning. Now added to it. There's a strike back to back. And there is action in the Minnesota bullpen, and indeed, Sydney Smith is getting her work in. Still nobody out in the second. Base is loaded. And Gooden stays alive. One of the unheralded stars in college softball. Over 600 in the NCAA tournament. Over 440 on the season. Bouncer to short. Gloved by Arneson. The force out at home. You said it. Let your defense do the work. They get a big first down in the second. It's exactly what Minnesota needed. Allie Arneson, the most sure-handed on the infield, playing shortstop. It's a great play, moving over towards third base, throwing on the run to her catcher, Burns, for the force out at home.
One down. Back to the top of the order for Bubba Nichols. Nichols homered to greet Pfizer in the bottom of the first inning, her 17th of the season. In there for a strike. Got her. Went down to 57. There were a couple of off-speed pitches in that at bat. She found it. Base is loaded, going up against a hitter who hit a home run off of you to lead off this game, and you get her on three pitches. Big bounce back for Pfizer. Not done yet with Perez to the plate. Strike one. Since the walk that drove in the second run, Seven straight strikes tossed by Pfizer. Pack was driven in on the walk to give UCLA the 2-0 lead. Tautalafua at third base after a walk in this frame. Washington had the RBI walk. She's at second. Good in the fielder's choice at first. Bouncer back to Pfizer, and she limits the damage in the second. Just one more across, a 2-0 UCLA lead through two in OKC. UCLA staking their All-American to a 2-0 lead as we head to the third. Rarified air that Rachel Garcia joined on Tuesday night when she won back-to-back -back USA Softball Player of the Year awards. Only been done by three others. A pretty good company. The three-time winner of it, Kat Osterman, who did not win a championship. Danielle Laurie did win one in 09, came back and won it in 2010. Ricketts had a title in 2013. Now Rachel Garcia is seeking one as well. Joins Pretty good company, Adam. I mean, those are three <laughs> of the names that we talk about as... The greats. As, I don't know, if you put a list together of 15 pitchers, yeah, I would imagine that they're in the top seven, yeah. at least, yeah. all three of those. And Garcia goes to work here in the third against 8-9-1. and one. Allie Lindner, the center fielder, leading things off for the Gophers. We see Piper Ritter talking with Amber Pfizer in the Minnesota dugout. Did a good job of battling. Who said it? Nichols home run, gets the next three in order. Gives up a run after some bad control, comes back to get the next three outs. Well, you know who one of her role models is, is Danielle Laurie. So you think about somebody who fought in the circle, and that would be Danielle. And Amber Pfizer just looking up to her as a little girl. Saying, I want to be her. I want to look like her in the circle. Two and two on Lindner. Another freshman from South Dakota. Short trip to Minnesota. Pokes one foul. You know, the tough thing about Rachel Garcia is... She just doesn't make that many mistakes. Yeah. She just lives on the corners with her curveball. She'll bring in a screwball every now and then, and she wants it to get you to chase a rise ball. Two two to Linder. That's what I mean. When she misses, she misses off the plate. Doesn't matter if she's working you on the inside corner, doesn't matter if she's working you off the plate on the outside corner. She just works inches. stays alive.
Three, two. Mentioned Garcia is third in the country in ERA this year. The only two players ahead of her, Shaylin O'Leary, who had something like a .65 ERA this year. As a freshman. As a for freshman Texas. for Texas. And then we'll see, potentially, the pitcher with the second best ERA in the country, part of the best staff in college softball for Oklahoma in Mariah Lopez. There's another strikeout for Garcia. Yeah, Rachel Garcia is the type of pitcher that likes to use that rise ball and curve ball. And those two pitches with the way that you release it are not too different. One spins a little bit up and one she's able to cut it across, but she's able to get that backwards rotation with her rise ball. And then of course, paint in the outside corner with her curve, able to throw it on both sides of the plate, like a backdoor curve right there. For her fourth K of the day. Here's Brandt back at the top, takes ball one. So Garcia now has 794 strikeouts in her UCLA career. She's now tied with her pitching coach, Lisa Fernandez. Ball and a strike on Carly Brandt. And, you know, putting Lisa Fernandez in, in charge of the pitchers was one of a few coaching changes that Kelly Inouye Perez made back in January. Made Kirk Walker the head of the defense, Lisa the head of the pitchers, and then Kelly herself in charge of the hitters. And that's a pretty recent change right before the season starts, but gave them more defined roles because they're, they're a coaching staff that can do a little bit of everything. They can all work on it. Lisa Fernandez hit. Kelly Eyes worked with the pitchers before, and then Kirk himself can work with the pitchers. Everybody was in the bullpen, and she mm -hmm. said, hey, Lisa, I'm going to put you down there. I want you to make these pitchers tougher, and I need them to work. And that's what Lisa Fernandez did with them this year. 2-2, Two -two, and a fifth strikeout. The first time through the order for Rachel Garcia. Now, Enoy Perez, remember, was a great catcher at UCLA. She was Lisa Fernandez's catcher for a point. And obviously, they're a great tandem together for a long time. Kelly Enoy Perez called the pitches. And obviously, Rachel Garcia sometimes calls her own. She's had various pitchers that could call their own games. But for the most part, when a pitch is called, it came from Enoy Perez. That is a bit of a change now with those three, Kelly, Lisa, and Kirk to try to define the roles a little bit more. One voice, one lead voice for each section of the game. Garcia ahead of Partain. Back at the top of the Minnesota order. McKenna grounded out to start this game. Tiffany Green gave you a great story about Minnesota's theme this year. Dream on, dream big. Back in the fall at one of the first practices of the season, Jamie Traxel blasted Aerosmith's dream on over the loudspeakers. McKenna Partain remembers that moment very well because she started crying during practice. Her eyes were welling up with tears listening to Dream On by Aerosmith. It's just a cool thing to dream about. That was in the fall. Here they are eight months later on the biggest stage in the sport. And McKenna Partain slices one into the gap. Oh, she stumbles around first base, and she's going to have to go back to the bag. That was an easy double, but Partain slipped around the first base bag. Still, she's aboard with the first Women's College World Series hit in Golden Gopher history. Finds a gap because the outfielders were playing so shallow. Bubba Nichols was playing close to the infield as well as Kelly Gooden. And she stumbles, unfortunately, rounding first base. That was a, that was a good one. Yeah. That's a hard fall. It was smooth looking, actually. I don't know if it can be, it's but a, it's, it's about, as, about as smooth as you can look stumbling around first base. Here's Houlihan. 
And Partain didn't touch the bag. She had to go back to the bag, make sure she... She put both feet kind of dancing on the bag to make sure she got on first base. But she is aboard with good speed. And she's a doubles hitter. 17th yep. double. It's surprised to see the, infield, or excuse me, the outfield playing so shallow against yeah. her. She's got some home run power as yeah. well. But how about second time through the order? McKenna Partain steps up and it says, hey, we're going to be different this second time through going up against Garcia. And a two-out hit that could have been for extra bases, but makes a statement to her team. 1-1 one, one to Houlihan. Houlihan trying to carry over her super regional success to OKC. Took a close pitch for a strike here. Houlihan went 0 for 9 in the regionals. Ended up with a Big double and a big home run in game one in that victory over LSU in the Super Regional. Two and two on Houlihan. On the ground to first. Good play by Pack. Inning over. Two and a half through in game two. Two nil UCLA. Garcia's bat number two next. We welcome you to Clearwater. The amount of great matchups and great teams here. Good piece of hitting here. It is gone! Spectacular matchups all weekend here. To the track! That is caught! What a catch! Are you serious? A magical couple of days. What an incredible event. That's called a promo for the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. This is called a reveal. Ooh. Who are the next two teams to join in on what is a phenomenal field for the 2020 St. Pete Clearwater Elite? St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invite.com. Oh, they didn't give it to us. I thought oh, they were going to give it to uh, us. Another tease. That's a great, uh, that, that is also a tease. Aliyah Jordan leads it out for UCLA <laughs> here in the bottom half of the third. All these great TV terms. Here's the reveal. Oh. And how coincidental that UCLA is playing in this game. <laughs> but how about it? UCLA, and remember the ACC champion this year, Virginia Tech. It was not Florida State that won the regular season crown. Wow. That is a great-looking field once again. There will be 16 total teams. <laughs> I mean, it was a place to be in February, I think, if you were a college softball fan. Well, now four Women's College World Series teams. Half the field is going to be in St. Pete in February to really welcome in the college softball season. And as soon as the World Series ends, I'm going to start a countdown on my phone, <laughs> counting down the days until that tournament. You think I'm joking? No, I didn't think you were joking. <laughs> I was silent because I knew you weren't joking. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's a straight to Jordan who struck out in the first. The geek oozes out of this booth for all of us mm -hmm. as softball fans. In different ways. In very different ways, I promise, but we're all on the same page. Lead off walk drawn by Jordan. Two walks in that last inning for Amber Pfizer. She averages about 1.8 walks per seven innings pitched. She already has three walks here in the bottom of the third. Yeah, and I, I really just think it's a little bit of nerves, maybe a little bit of fatigue, and just the emotion itself, it, that even wears you out. It's not just the physicality of pitching 550 pitches in the postseason. It's all of it combined. Now has to face Rachel Garcia, who grounded out to end the first.
On the ground, into left field. Base hit for Garcia. And great base running by Jordan with a monster jump to get to third base. That looked like a base hit that would probably leave Jordan sitting at second. She's at third. Yeah, Leah Jordan just a good read. Picked up her third base coach, Kirk Walker, who's center. And not even a play at third base. But that was a hit that Allie Arneson was playing up the middle of the field. And it was an off-speed pitch that Rachel Garcia got around and found a hole through the 5-6. Great acceleration by Jordan around the pack at second. Here's Pack. So now you face one of the deadlier power hitters in this lineup with two on and nobody out. There is a base open, but the last thing you want to do is have to fight through another bases loaded nobody out spot, as Pfizer had to do in the second. In the air to center. Lindner back. This is probably deep enough. Jordan takes off, scores easily. Three to nothing, UCLA on and, a pack sack flat. And that's what that base running could do. When you go from first to third like that, Kirk Walker being aggressive and Aaliyah Jordan just fundamental base running, picking up her third base coach before she got to second base to be able to take two bags. And that way you have so many different ways and opportunities to score with a runner at third base and less than two outs like a sacrifice fly. You hear things like taking the extra base. That's how it manifests itself as a positive thing for UCLA a batter later and it's important too now because look at how UCLA just continues to get people on and they've scored in all three frames of this game Sullivan takes a strike she's got one of the four Bruin hits so far in a strike. A roller to third for Kemet Mueller. Has time. It's the out at first. Garcia moves to second. Two down. Arneson and Kemet Mueller on the left side of that Minnesota defense, both all Big Ten defensive team selections. Here's Brianna Tatalafua. Had a good at bat for a walk after being down 0-2 in the count in the second. Helped extend the inning for Washington, who walked to drive in a run. Popped up. Houlihan coming on. Again, one across for UCLA. The Bruins have scored in each of the first three frames to give a lead to Garcia. And we'll talk with their head coach, Kelly Inouye Perez, next. Watching the NCAA Women's College World Series presented by Capital One. A 3 0 advantage for UCLA as we head into the fourth inning. I'm with the Bruins head coach, Kelly Inouye Perez. And coach, Bubble Nichols said she was saving her best for now. She helped set the tone with that solo home run at the top of the game. Uh, just how has she been able to step up for you all in big moments? You know, I think one thing that we can feel really good about is Bubba Nichols always has quality at bats. You know, even, even if she doesn't get an outcome, she has a great presence. She's very calm. You know, she has an eye for the strike zone. Um, so we have a lot of confidence, which is why I put her up 
in that leadoff spot to be able to have those quality at bats and to put us on the board in that first inning is you know is literally a college world series and that's what you're that's what you dream about um, but we feel very confident those are the things that Bubba does for us speaking of an eye for the strike zone Rachel Garcia has done a good job thus yeah. far what have you seen from her yeah you know I think the, the the way she started the game, which was, you know, I think that's the most important thing, to be able to go out there and attack the strike zone early and get out. Um, you know, we have a lot of confidence with Rachel. She she does a great job of being able to attack hitters. I think she works very well with Lisa. The defense plays very well confidently behind her. So she's just being Rachel Garcia, and we're, you know, we're, we're fortunate to be able to have her in the circle. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Kelly Enoy Perez giving a little love to the camera there, too. Last championship of their 11 came in 2010. You see Rachel Garcia has been rock solid so far, trying to work them into the championship series. The last time UCLA was there, one of the great moments in Women's College World Series history when Megan Langenfeld had the walk-off home run. Andrea Harrison had a couple of huge hits in that championship series. 15 to nine in the second game of that series. Langenfeld had the walk-off in game one. And then the offensive onslaught was on for UCLA to win its 11th and latest title. Again, that Pac-12 drought, certainly something that's been looming over softball, especially the last couple of seasons. Top part of the order for Garcia, Brandner, Den Hartog, and Kemet Mueller. Tough to say, tougher to get through, I would imagine. <laughs> Garcia one and one against the Gophers hottest hitter in the postseason. Yeah, and remember last year UCLA was in the driver's seat mm -hmm. headed into Sunday, undefeated, looking like they were just one win away from making it to the champ finals, and then Florida State came in and beat them twice. A rare thing to pull off, as we talked about. Hadn't been done since 2010. Florida State was able to win twice on Sunday. Three balls and a strike, and Paige Halstead, trusted catcher, is going to go out and talk with Garcia. A reminder that the NBA Finals start up tonight. Golden State trying to make it a three-peat. Toronto on for the first time in the NBA Finals. Michelle and company have NBA Countdown at 8.30 Eastern time. All of it available on the ESPN app. Three and two on Brander. It's a big swing in that 3-1 count. I thought Brander was trying to hit it with the scoreboard. See some of the notable alums. We just happen to be mentioning UCLA and Arizona. Putting Bob Myers, the assistant GM. Brander skies one to left. One down. <laughs> Top three finalists for NFCA National Freshman of the Year. Fellow Big Ten player won it about Danielle Williams of Northwestern the Wildcats were a super regional team this year as well Told you about Den Hartog's dad, John, who's a high school football coach. Natalie was a lot like, what was it, Hayden Panettieri's character yeah. in Remember the Titans? She was the one at football practice yelling at players on her dad's team. She would yell at players if they left water cups lying around. And then when she had the opportunity to play football, sure enough, she suited up, was convinced that she was going to get to play linebacker in the NFL someday. 
if she was a running back and a linebacker. Well, she also made a lot of the boys cry because she was stronger than most of them. And of course, her dad did a lot with her swing is essentially her hitting coach. Her dad also coaches baseball. Did a lot to work on her swing. Goes down swinging here against Garcia. Strikeout number six. Second time she's gotten the freshman. Two down for Kemet Mueller. Well, we've seen the pitchers out of the pack step up so far at the World Series. Taylor McQuillan threw a great game, of course, got the win, and then Taryn Alvello threw well. Unfortunately, gave up those two big swings, but you, know, you take away those two home runs. That was a game. I know it's easier said than done, but and then now Rachel Garcia throwing a shutout. Garcia named a first team All American again as a utility slash pitcher. Kind of dedicated that spot to her. Her counterpart, Pfizer, was a first team All American along with Gabby Plain, who did not pitch for Washington in the first game today. And then G. Juarez, the former Arizona State Sun Devil, who pitched here with Arizona State last year, transferred to Oklahoma now. He's part of that excellent staff. She just has that combination of not only throwing velocity, 69, 70, but good spin and movement. And it's tough as a hitter to go up against that because, too, with that movement, she just hits the corners, mm -hmm. doesn't miss over with the plate very often. Three and two. <laughs> Try to float a change in there and missed. Second walk issued by Rachel Garcia comes with two outs in the fourth. Yeah, we haven't seen her throw a ton of off speed because, I mean, quite frankly, she hasn't needed it. Right. But she can throw that as a change up, dropped it down to 50 miles an hour. She's thrown her off speed drop ball a few times in there, just hasn't been for strikes. Gonna ring up the shortstop, Ali Arneson, who grounded out her first time. And there's that off-speed drop yep. ball I'm talking about. 54 on the gun. Long journey for Rachel Garcia. Four years ago, she was pitching in the state championship game in California. Game went to 12 innings. She had 24 strikeouts in the game, threw a pitch, and then collapsed to the ground. She came down awkwardly on her left knee. It's her landing leg as she delivers tosses. It's an injury four years ago that limited Garcia, has bounced back to become one of the top pitchers in all of the country. Well, that's why she's a redshirt junior and not a senior. Mm -hmm. Ended up redshirting her freshman year. First Pac-12 player to get player of the year and pitcher of the year in the same season. There have only been three players in Pac-12 history to even earn pitcher of the week and player of the week in the same week. You want to take a guess at which of the other two is on the field right now. I would guess Lisa Fernandez. You guessed right, my friend. <laughs> Garcia, Lisa Fernandez, and Tara Beaster. 
who played at Oregon State in the late 90s. Eighty pitches now with two outs in the top of the fourth. Minnesota making Garcia work a little. And there for a strike. Arneson thought she had ball four. Two out walk for Kemet Mueller. Another 3 2. Little floater towards second. What a catch by Washington! Hang a star on that one. Shuts down the inning with more great defense. And she's been seeing a lot of action on the ground, but this time she gets one in the air, times her jump perfectly for the stretch in the third out. Happy pitcher. Welcome back to Oklahoma City with Amber Pfizer, the Minnesota head coach. And you talked all season long about dreaming big. For your Gophers now, is there anything you want them to focus small on now? Yeah, just keep controlling our emotions. And we talk, we've talked about that for the last month or so. And um, just settling in because we, we talk a lot about making sure that we're attacking lead outs. And they've gotten all their, their lead off kids on the last three innings and they've crossed the home plate. So just got to do a little better job of executing, keeping it simple. We've gotten ourselves out of some jams, which has kept us in this ball game a little bit. But just comes down to the execution key piece, which really comes back to, I think, controlling our emotions a little bit. And also, Amber Pfizer has helped to carry you all throughout yeah. this season and especially the postseason. Oh, yeah. How have you seen her battle today, especially getting out of that jam? Yeah, she's battling. She doesn't have her best stuff, and she's, you know, um, she's got to keep working through it. We believe in her. She gives us a chance to win every inning that we're here, and we're still in this ball game right now. So she's going to have the ball until um, we need to make a change, but we still believe that we have a chance to win this game, so she's going to have the ball. All right, thanks, Coach. Thanks, you guys. Thanks very much, Tiff. Jamie Traxel in her second season, leaning on Pfizer. And Pfizer talked about stamina and why... It's so important for her to have it. This is one of the reasons she says she's got more stamina, more flexibility, Taekwondo. And this isn't just like, oh, that's a funny story. That's a fun thing to see, cool picture. She's gonna be a second degree black belt in like three months. She's a first degree Taekwondo black belt right now. Kinsley Washington fouls away the first pitch of the fourth. Yeah, so many things that it helped her with. One of which, of course, is flexibility, as you mentioned. and then more of like the internal things of that mentality sure. of respect your opponent, respect the game, integrity. There's a whole other side to Taekwondo, but I mean also her parents got her into it to teach her a little bit self-defense. She was a quiet girl growing up and they enrolled her and ended up stopping doing it because she wanted to just focus on softball, but as of recently really wanted to get back into it. Get that second degree as you mentioned. On the outside corner for called strike three. And Tiff, Amber Pfizer has so much going for her, obviously a leader for this team, but deals with so much off the field, it's impressive to hear about. For sure, Adam, and when you think about the mental toughness that Amanda was just talking about through Taekwondo, she also has watched her father fight. He's gone through uh, a number of health scares, currently battling prostate cancer and she says she draws inspiration for him she watches him fight she watches him battle and so he is the reason why she is here he's been with her every pitch of the way and she's going to continue to lean on his strength he's had two kidney transplants in his life rob has he is currently dealing with radiation treatments for prostate cancer they're going to find out in about a month if he's going to be clean going forward, which certainly all of us hope the best for Rob and the Pfizer family. We asked what type of softball dad is he? Is he intense? Is he calm? Is he somewhere in the middle? And said, he's a, he's a lot like I am. And it's funny watching Pfizer, who doesn't change facial expressions very often, and then watching Rob equally as calm and steady in the crowd right now. He, he doesn't really change. What you see is what you get right yeah. there on the right side. 
Facing Bubba Nichols, who homered back in the first. Saw him in the in the regionals. Yep. And he looked exactly the same. <laughs> He's so steady. And that's yep. what you get out of Amber Absolutely. Pfizer in the circle, too. He taught her that. And she called Rob her rock. And one of the biggest things he taught her growing up was just whenever you go out on the field, you put that jersey on, the game starts, you've got to be there to support your teammates and be the best for your teammates no matter what else is going on, whether it's health issues or relationship issues that she likes to talk to him about too. And got to be able to have that separation. She does a good job of it. And Rob played. He was a slow pitch and a fast pitch player. Played competitive softball, Rob did, until he was 42 years old. And Amber would go to all of his games. And Rob's watching right now as Pfizer tries to bounce back with her first perfect inning of the World Series. Payoff pitch to Nichols. This could be a big inning, too, for Pfizer in the Minnesota defense. Mm -hmm. Be able to put a zero on the board under the fourth inning because UCLA has scored in every inning of this game, but that helps give you momentum, especially, too, because Minnesota's at bats right now. They're going up against Garcia, seeing a lot of pitches, working her deep into the count. It might just take that little bit of extra momentum on defense to bring it into the bats to push them over the edge. Got her swinging. And steady as the rock that he is. Rob just looking down on his phone as it blows up. Watching Amber get a strike out of Nichols. There's a little emotion from Amber Pfizer coming off the field. And that's about as much as you're going to get from Rob. <laughs> 3-0 UCLA. This is a Florida wave. They are looking ahead and they have been lights out in the circle and offensively. The Cowgirls can certainly swing it. Is Romero, the tone setter for this Sooners lineup. And all smiles right now for Alabama, the winningest team in the country. We're about ready to get it going. Women's College World Series presented by Capital One. Arizona with the extra inning win. Deja Muli pull a home run in the eighth inning off of Taryn Alvelo to give Arizona the lead. Taylor McQuillan made it all stand up. They'll take on the winner of this one. And then we've got Florida, Oklahoma State, Alabama, Oklahoma, and Goldie all here at the Women's College World Series. Bottom of the Minnesota order against Garcia here in the top of the fifth. Washington will play Saturday in a survival game. In fact, Washington will play the loser of this game in an elimination contest on Saturday. Arizona will play the winner of this game tomorrow night in our first winner's contest. Ooh, that one came to the back leg of Burns. And the hit by pitches that we've seen today have been just dead on. Oof, the top man. of her back knee. Yeah. Remember, she's a catcher, so it's not going to feel great in her squat. Maybe mm. not today, but tomorrow, Saturday, it's, ooh, it's not going to feel very good. Well, she's aboard to start the top of the fifth. We remind you that the Women's College World Series Championship Series begins Monday at 7.30 Eastern Time, live on ESPN. For more information on the 2019 Women's College World Series, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Wait till you see what we have in store for you in the finals. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the Champ Series coming up starting Monday night. Allie Lindner stands in in the eighth spot. It's important, Adam, that Minnesota got their leadoff on for the first time. Yep. Had seven full counts so far in this game against Garcia. So, like I said, they're making her work. They just need some of those full counts, some of these at-bats, just to swing back their way and take advantage. Two balls and no strikes on Lindner. 
The seven hole hitter gets hit, and now the eight hole hitter is ahead 2 0. Again, while Minnesota only has one hit in this game, they've only had four base runners, but they have made Garcia's pitch count climb a little higher than she would certainly expect for a one-hit shutout performance so far. Down the left field line, foul. Yeah, it's definitely going to be something to pay attention to, to see how much Rachel Garcia throws in the Women's College World Series compared to last year and how much they give the ball to the Pac-12 Freshman of the Year, Megan Faremo or even Holly Acevedo. On the outside corner. I'm not even sure Halstead thought that was going to be a called strike. <laughs> but Garcia clips it for her seventh K. Yeah, I think Rachel Garcia went ahead and made this call on her own. Screwball in the outside corner, getting Lindner the lefty. So one down for the nine hitter, Carly Brandt, who struck out back in the third. Sends one to center. Nichols is there. Two down. Back to first goes Burns. So five strikeouts the first time through the order for Minnesota. Just two the second time through. Putting the ball in play more. Taking Rachel Garcia into deeper counts too. Just a lot of pitches out of her today. Back to the top for McKenna Partain, who singled for the only Minnesota hit back in the third. There's an off-speed drop ball, 61 miles an hour. It takes about 10, 9 to 10 miles an hour off of it. Better spot with that pitch, the best one that she's thrown in this game. There's a pitch you said you wanted to see maybe come out a little earlier today. Nothing in two on Partain. Eyes are awaiting in the dugout. UCLA will have two, three, and four coming up. And it's going to be a tough task to try to keep this game where it's at. And that's Pfizer's job right now. And she comes back out. who has a lead off the bottom of the fifth. A little change up, check swing, roller back to Garcia. Foot stayed on the bag for Pack in time. And we're four and a half through. Garcia will bat third in the next frame, working a shutout from the circle. The best two-way player in the country getting it done in the circle so far for the Bruins. You're watching the NCAA Women's College World Series presented by Capital One. Bruins half of the fifth inning with a three to nothing lead back at the World Series. She was on the field making some sparkling defensive plays. Now she's a volunteer assistant for the Bruins. Getting into it during the seventh, or I guess fifth inning stretch here. <laughs> now a volunteer assistant and she's gonna get set to watch her uh, younger sister by three years, Brianna Perez. Lead things off for UCLA in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Corners playing in on Brianna, who takes ball one. The first time Kylie and Brianna played together, Kylie was 11, Brianna was 8, and Kylie threw the ball right at her sister and knocked out her front tooth. Oh, no. <laughs> the bouncing ball to second base. Perez retired, one down. Interestingly enough, guys, Bri has taken on more of a leadership role from her sister, and they're very different leaders, but all great at the same time. Bri is super loose. She's got pregame dance parties, according to teammates, and that's been a key to their success. Although we saw. 
Kelly looking a little loose and free. <laughs> Getting after it. <laughs> so perhaps uh, that's passing over to the older sister. <laughs> Rubbing off on one another. That's great. Personality styles starting to mesh. Well, and with the way that Kylie was dancing, you just wanted to jump in and <laughs> dance with her. But what's cool about them getting to play together for one year at UCLA last year here is that they both played the middle infield. Yep, played together up the middle, one of the better tandems in the Pac-12. Jordan skies one foul. Sonia and Jeff were uh, our Kylie and Bree's parents. Introduced them to sports in general. They play basketball, soccer, and of course, very successful on the softball diamond. Ball and a strike on Jordan. Seventy-five tosses for Pfizer, working with one out in the fifth. Garcia on deck. And Garcia will come to the plate with a runner at first. Jordan draws the one-out walk. Again, coming into this game, Amber Pfizer had thrown about 36 innings. Only issued eight free passes based on balls and 635 pitches that she's thrown. Counting this tournament. One. Yeah, incredible. But that's a little bit of the old school mentality, too. I remember sitting in the room yesterday when Danielle Laurie was talking about that. Kind of the old school, I'm going to take the ball, I'm the ace, give it to me, we're going to win or lose on my back type of mentality. And you've seen it out of Kelly Barnhill for Florida a sure. little bit this year too. Most likely she's going to take a, a big part of the load for Florida here. Well, we've seen multiple pitchers in the circle during the championship series for teams in the last, I would say probably six years. Yeah. To an Oda Garcia. Popped up. Yeah, because you think about Florida doing it in 2014 and 2015 when they went back to back. Tim Walton mixing up his pitching staff and keeping us on our toes is who's going to get the start? 2013, Ricketts, Gascoigne for Oklahoma, tandem of pitchers. And I feel like going back to 2012, that was maybe the last time it really felt like we had an ace clinch it. That was Jackie Trino for Alabama in 2012. That one gets away from Burns, and on to second goes Jordan. Wild pitch against Pfizer. And not to say all the pitchers that have won the last five, six, they're not, they're all aces. They're yeah. all great pitchers, but I mean, one pitcher, it was train or bust in 2012. Feels like coaches have had more options the last five or six years. Three and two on Garcia. Well, it's just kind of like last year when it was Rachel Garcia or bust for UCLA. Sure. And again, it's different when you get here. It's different when you're pitching in the postseason. But there is much more of a staff mentality for UCLA this year compared to last year. Azevedo and Selena Taamilo only pitched four innings at the World Series last year. It was Garcia and go. Three, two. Ball four, and two on with one out. Back-to-back -back walks issued by Pfizer. We're getting you set for game one of the NBA Finals tonight on ABC. We'll lead into it with Sports Center tonight at 6 o'clock Eastern time with Sage Steele and Kevin Gandhi. Stephen A. Smith is on site. Remember, this game one is in Scotiabank Arena in Toronto. Golden State is not the number one seed, so Stephen A will have a look from Toronto. We'll talk about Tiger and the first look at the Memorial. Some questions for the Cleveland Browns coming up during off-season workouts. That's on ESPN of the ESPN app with Kevin and Sage at 6 Eastern.
Taylor Pack's going to come to the plate. A pair of pinch runners have checked in. Jackie Prober takes over at second base. And Stevie Wiz is into the game at first base. Big cut from Pack. Nothing in one. Ball and a strike on Pack. One and two. Pack Singleton scored in the second, had the sack fly in the third. A productive day so far for Taylor. Waves and misses on the change there. And Pfizer gets her fifth strikeout of the day. We mentioned that Stevie Wiz had checked in as a pinch runner at first base. This is one of the stories that you may want to follow up on as we go forward this summer. An incredible story that Stevie Wiz is. She's had two open heart surgeries and put a third on hold so that she could close out the season playing softball for UCLA. She's got another heart surgery scheduled for June. June 13th, she's going to walk at graduation. She's going to get her bachelor's degree in biology. And then nine days later, she's going to be in the hospital undergoing a procedure. She suffered from heart ailments virtually her entire life. She wears a pacemaker to keep her heart beating. I'm going to say that again. She wears a pacemaker to keep her heart beating. An incredible story. Throw back behind the runner at second and back in safely is Jordan. Or, uh, beg your pardon, the pinch runner in Port Probert. And guys, when you think about this remarkable journey that Stevie Wiz has been on, the name on her uniform is closer to her heart than maybe people realize, given the fact that all she wanted to do was play softball at UCLA, the very place that saved her life because of that heart condition, guys. Incredible, Tiff. Great to see her running out there on the field, no matter what. Follow up on this story. We wish the best to Stevie and her family. Way to go, kid. Way to be out here. You're watching the NCAA Women's College World Series 38th edition presented by Capital One. All but a few World Series have been here in Oklahoma City since 1990. Right now the Bruins with a 3-0 lead. Jackie Prober who pinch ran in the bottom of the fifth stays in right field for the UCLA defense. And Rachel Garcia goes back to work against 2, 3, and 4 in the Minnesota order. Trying to get going here offensively at the World Series. That'll do it. Maddie Houlihan starts it off with a soft single. Tell me their at-bats have been better. That's just their second hit off the bat at Houlihan. But you can tell that they're fighting within their at-bats and starting to see her better. Sneaks one past Pack, past Washington. Over at second base for a leadoff single. And Minnesota now, second time they've gotten their leadoff hitter on. They did it in the last inning when Burns was hit by a pitch. 95 tosses for Garcia now as she'll face the two toughest home run hitters in the lineup for Minnesota back to back. Brandner and then Den Hartog. This is such a big inning Huge. for Minnesota's offense. You almost feel like... The game comes down to this inning. You have the middle of your lineup coming up. Houlihan gets that leadoff single. Your best chance right now. Ooh. 
Brander, an all-freshman selection in the Pac-12 last year at Oregon State. I liked reading Hope Brander's bio when they asked her, oh, who's your favorite player? She said Cheyenne Cordes at Cal. It's because it's her cousin. I just think that's cool. Popped up. Washington out. Nichols in for the out. Back to first goes Houlihan. I mean, in this game, Minnesota's yet to get a runner even past second base. Or even to second base, actually. Yeah, Everybody's haven't. just stayed over at first base. Yeah. Haven't had one in scoring position yet. Garcia has stranded four Gophers on base today. About to throw her 100th pitch of the day. There's Kemet Mueller. If you're a little softball player, Adam, you come here and you're just all about getting the most autographs you can get. <laughs> That's a good call. On shirts, <laughs> shirts gloves, balls, whatever bat, you got. Like whatever. <laughs> By the way, beg your pardon, Den Hartog at the plate. Strike it out twice the day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting on yours. Like five years. Still don't have an Amanda Scarborough autograph. Just trying to keep you, keep you guessing. Just, just, just keep me humble. Show up every year. Is, is this the year? No. No, it's not. Maybe one day. Can only imagine the possibilities. <laughs> I think it's two on Natalie. Golf's one towards left. Good and back. Leaping and she can't make the catch. Around third, here comes Houlihan, and the first Gophers run in World Series history scores. That ball went a really long way when it looked like Den Hartog had checked her swing. Because Den Hartog is so strong. This is an off-speed drop ball that she just gets her barrel on plane by getting in her legs and keeps her hands back long enough to hit it over the head of Kelly Gooden. And a great read by Maddie Houlihan, who started at first base, saw that down, and then Jamie Traxel, the head coach and the third base coach, setting her all the way. Well, remember that run in Minneapolis forever. Off the bat of the freshman, Den Hartog. And she's in scoring position for what is now the tying run at the plate in Kemet Mueller. Down the right field line, Prober can't get there. For more on Natalie, down to Tiffany. Well, guys, you mentioned that Den Hartog's dad, John, was a football coach. He said he drew from his high school state championship experiences and coaching and told his daughter, hey, look, don't be overwhelmed by this moment. Don't focus on the big picture. Try to do the small things, the first pitch, the next pitch. That's all you have to do. We told you about John as a football coach, a hitting coach for Natalie. There's a floater towards short. Perez is there. Two down. Back to second goes Den Hartog. Well, and she had struck out in her first two at bats. Yeah. It's almost like you could tell when she got two strikes, she's like, I am not going <laughs> down again. Yep. Whatever it takes, I'm going to put my bat on this ball. There's the football coach at Hopkins and his former football playing daughter. <laughs> Tying run, it's still at the plate in Arneson. Count. 
Two balls and no strikes. Love the approach there by Ali Arneson. 2-0 count, on time, fouling that one up hard down the line, but he's looking for something to drive. This is a heavy extra base hit team. A lot of doubles, a lot of home runs. Maybe not the pumped up home run numbers that we've seen from some of the other teams in the field, but over 70 this year for Minnesota. Two one to Arneson. Towards the gap in left center field and down. The Gophers cut the lead to one. Play at the plate, out. The run had already scored though. The RBI belongs to Arneson and UCLA's lead is cut to one as the Gophers strike for the first time in World Series history. Minnesota needed this. It was Maddie Houlihan, it was Natalie Den Hartog, and then it was Ali Arneson with the hustle play trying to get into second base. But the important thing is they scored two runs in this inning. Although Arneson gets out at second. Great to see Minnesota get on the board. This is a great play to keep the tying run off the bases by Nichols, though. Yeah, and it's not just the throw. It's the fact that she cut off that ball and it didn't get to the wall. But that throw was on a line to her second baseman to be able to go down and make the tag. Didn't even one-hop it. Washington with the tag. Great throw by Nichols from the outfield. She could bat here in this frame if anybody gets on base. But Arneson gets the RBI to cut the lead to one. We've got a one-run game to the bottom of the sixth. And now can Amber Pfizer get the shutdown inning Minnesota needs to stay in this game and have a chance in the seventh? Brianna Tautalafua's spot in the order is due up to start the sixth, but she's 0 for 14 in the NCAA tournament. So they'll turn to Malia Quarles, who's been a key pinch hitter this year in this her sophomore campaign. 7 for 23 overall as a pinch hitter this year. 0 for 3 in the postseason. And these are big runs. It's the bottom of the order, but big runs for UCLA to try to give Garcia some insurance. 1-1. One one. It's just impressive, too, that Minnesota, with the way that Amber has thrown the ball and the traction that UCLA has had on the base pass, that they're just down by one run. Sure. Amber Pfizer has walked five in this game. It's actually a career high, but somehow when runners have gotten on, she's not given up that much damage, and she and the defense have kept her team in it. Left side, Kemet Mueller's there. You said five walks, right? Career yeah. high? Yeah. Only one of those walks has scored, surprisingly yeah. enough. A lot of traffic as you talked about UCLA has left six on base that's a credit to Pfizer keeping her team in it remember the bases were loaded with nobody out all the way back in the second and only one run was scratched across by UCLA here's Kinsley Washington who's had a great day good in defensive play and an RBI walk man there are times in this game where you've really seen the type of pitcher that Amber Pfizer yeah. is and what she's capable of. And there, there's little lapses where you can just tell that she's not throwing her best game, but you can see what she's capable of. Mm -hmm. The other way. And that drops in front of Brandt. Trapped. A base hit for Washington out of the eighth spot. Continues her excellent World Series performance so far. It's a big hit for UCLA, mm -hmm. too, because top of the order is looming. There's Kelly Gooden in the nine spot. 0 for 2 today. Pushes the bunt. Pfizer has to hurry. Will not have a play. Through late to second. A good job just to get a glove on that by McKenna Partain. 
And that stopped the line. He was able to knock it down, and that prevents any movement from Washington. It is an infield bunt single for Gooden. And one of the things that she's worked so hard on this year is deadening bunts just like this. Look at where she is down the baseline wow. already. <laughs> By the time that Pfizer picks up the ball, she has no chance. Kind of an unnecessary throw to second base. Could have been costly, too, for Minnesota's defense. Back to the top. Here's Nichols. This might be the key at bat in the game. In the top of the seventh inning, Minnesota has Burns, Lindner, and Brandt. They've combined to go 0 for 5 with three strikeouts at the bottom of the Minnesota order today. One of them is going to need to get on base for the top of the Minnesota order. That's why Pfizer needs to keep this game where it's at in a one-run contest. Nothing and two on Nichols. Linder will bat second in the Minnesota seventh. Burns will lead it off. Nichols getting checked out. Chris Gibson is the assistant athletic trainer for UCLA. Want to make sure Nichols was all right after that foul ball. Off the knee. We've seen that happen a couple of times today. 0-2. Nichols stays alive. It's kind of been a painful morning, huh? <laughs> More so emotionally for me than physically. <laughs> Just getting the jabs verbal from Amanda all day. Just abuse. It's all right. We've gotten two one-run games so far, or uh, two tight games, I should say, today. Yeah. Two-run game that went to extras in our first one. Nichols looked to be foul, and it is ruled as such by the home plate umpire, Cameron Ellison. Great shot by our great crew. Clearly fouled. Good call by Ellison. But if that one's fair, that may score two. <laughs> That's a big call. Nichols fouls it away. Fouled off five in this at bat. Yeah, after that home run, Pfizer's done a good job of just mm -hmm. handling Nichols. Couple yeah. of strikeouts against her and then quickly getting ahead and this AB02. Two big insurance runs on the base pads. To second. Bobbled by Partain. Here comes the runner from third in Washington. She will score. And it's 4-2 UCLA. Really good defensive team for Minnesota and Mark McKenna Partain. This will be her 11th there. The third base coach, Kirk Walker, just sending Washington as soon as that ball went down was going to be aggressive, knowing the importance of just that extra insurance run as we head to the top of the seventh inning and want more. This is the second Partain error of the NCAA tournament. Here's Brianna Perez who fouls one at the plate. No RBI for Nichols. E4 allows Washington to come home after she had reached third. As we said, a big insurance run for UCLA. Rockets one foul. Sydney Smith back to the bullpen, man. Jeez. Everybody <laughs> in this game has reached safely except for Bree Perez. Or has reached. She's the only one. Popped out, grounded out twice.
Pfizer continues to battle. And gets the strikeout of Perez. A big second out here in the sixth. Her dad, Rob, stone cold. <laughs> <laughs> Aaliyah Jordan was pinch run for in the fifth inning by Jackie Prober, who stayed in the game to play in, uh, play in right field. And now Aaliyah Jordan will re-enter the game. You're allowed to re-enter one time. Garcia on deck. Pfizer doesn't want to have to deal with that. Jordan sends one to right. Long gone. A bash by the Bruins from Jordan, and they've blown it open here in the sixth. Back from Tommy John surgery. And a big blast here at OKC to give UCLA a five-run advantage on Pfizer. Swinging early in the count. She's ready to go. That's a clear mistake that Aaliyah Jordan takes advantage of, knowing it off the bat. You can tell by the feel and knowing that that was a mistake that you just punished and hit out of the park to now give your team a five-run lead. All the runs in this inning, because of that partane error, at second base are unearned against Pfizer. She would have had Nichols for the second out. Based on the scoring system, you make the assumption that the next batter would have had the same result. Perez struck out. That would have ended the inning. Instead, Jordan comes up with two on and cranks one to give UCLA the five-run lead. And I think if you're UCLA, you're just loving the at-bats that you've put together against Pfizer. Remember, first-team All-American in the circle, and you've been able to take advantage of some of her pitches and four different innings that UCLA has scored. Yep. Rob looking on. And Pfizer back to her stone-cold face. She did make reference to it, by the way. She made a joke about it during uh, our meeting with Pfizer. It's like, yeah, people make fun of me for it because my, <laughs> my resting face just looks so stoic. She had a good laugh about that with us. She saw some emotion from Pfizer, but usually it's very steady. Three and two on her counterpart, Garcia. All smiles over there from uh, Jordan after the home run. And every home run ball gets delivered to the families. Garcia walks with two outs here in the sixth. There it is. That's yours. The Jordan family gets to hold down to that one forever. Pack. Six walks now in this game for Pfizer, a career high. In the right field, a base hit. Garcia stops at second, and the line keeps moving for the Bruins. And here comes Jamie Traxel. This Minnesota has given up the most runs they've allowed in three plus months. Pfizer has thrown every pitch of the postseason for Minnesota. 673 tosses in the postseason. She steps out for the first time. The NCAA Women's College World Series is presented by Capital One. 
What's in your wallet? A couple of home runs for the Bruins today, including a three-run shot from Aaliyah Jordan here in the sixth inning. It's all part of a four-run frame, a 7-2 lead for, Minis uh, for UCLA rather on Minnesota. The winner of this game moves on to take on Arizona. If it is UCLA, it'll be the two programs with the most championships in Women's College World Series history, squaring off at the World Series for the first time since the 2010 Finals. Pfizer is done, 114 pitches today, 673 in the NCAA tournament. She had thrown 45 straight innings for Minnesota. The last time somebody else threw a pitch, you got to go back to the Big Ten championship game, which was started by Sidney Smith, the transfer from LSU. She threw the first four innings in that contest. Yeah, I think that this is a game that had really bright moments for Amber Pfizer and then some really tough moments, but Sidney Smith will now get some action and get another taste of Oklahoma City. She's been here already with LSU in her career. Originally from Maple Grove, Minnesota, and back in her home state. One and one on Colleen Sullivan. On the ground is short. Artisan takes the short out at second. And Minnesota miscue kept the inning alive for Aaliyah Jordan. Beginning of this inning, they were just up by one run, but they need a little extra cushion and a sweet, beautiful swing with an even more pretty smile off the bat of Aaliyah Jordan. Capital One rewarding performance today. How about Bubba Nichols? Greeting Amber Pfizer rudely in the bottom of the first to give UCLA the first lead. It was three to two in the top of the six. Minnesota had just scored the tying run and Nichols came up with what might now be the biggest play of the day. The throw, the tag, Allie Arneson trying to stretch that hit into a double, get herself into scoring position. But Bubba Nichols said, not on my watch and beautifully played from center field in all different ways defensively. Emma Burns in the seventh spot. The freshman leads it off against Garcia, who's got a five-run cushion with which to work. Think about that throw by Nichols. If she doesn't get that out on Arneson, the tying run is in scoring position for Minnesota with only two outs. And again, no guarantee that they would have scored the run. But that play was huge. And then the error by Partain, which extended the inning for Aaliyah Jordan, that three-run blast that opened things up. Those are the two plays that probably stick out the most in this game right now. Well, and you could talk about the throw, but the fact that she kept the ball from hitting the wall, too, also kept Arneson oh, yeah. off a second. Great cutoff. Garcia with the easy play to retire Burns. Taylor Chell is going to pinch hit for Ali Lindner in the eighth spot. First pitch swinging from Chell. High pop to Perez. Two down. And Garcia seeking a bounce back win after those two tough UCLA losses on Sunday a year ago against Florida State that eliminated them in the semis. Garcia and the rest of these Bruins trying to get off to a good start as the two seed here in OKC. Carly Brandt, the last chance to extend for Minnesota. It's just been a good team game yep. for UCLA. They've Balance. not just relied on one player, not just Garcia in the circle, not just Bubba Nichols, but a good defense. Garcia's thrown a solid game. And then everybody getting in on the action offensively. One through nine, everybody getting a taste with the exception of Bree Perez. Well, unfortunately for her, 0 for 4 today. 
But this is what we saw in the Super Regionals. Remember, UCLA had a couple of lapses in the Regionals. Offensively, they were very balanced throughout their lineup in the Supers against JMU. Two and one on Brandt. The last time Kelly Enoy Perez won a championship was on this field nine years ago against a conference rival that they may see in about 27 hours. Brandt sends one to left for Gooden. It's going to be 19 national championships combined on Friday night here at OKC when UCLA and Arizona square off. A 7-2 Bruin win behind a balanced bashing attack and Rachel Garcia in the circle. Just a, a complete game. They gave up those two runs to Minnesota in that one inning in the top of the six. But other than that, UCLA just being able to answer back. They gave up those two runs and then scored fourth. Archie's four in the bottom of that inning. Pfizer battled all day, making her Women's College World Series debut along with every other Softball player in maroon and gold on the field. But Garcia and the Bruins are moving on to Friday night once again. Kind of just gives you chills thinking about the history.